welcome elderly caregivers i dr manoj kumawat welcome you in unit number 3 of module number 2 this unit will cover the extra support services that you need to give to elderly on daily basis which includes preparing or serving meal attending visitors and recording daily vitals caregivers in the earlier units of this module you have seen that what is the daily care routine that you have to follow which includes in unit number 1 you have covered the daily care routine before noon and in unit number 2 you had covered the daily care routine after noon and in this particular unit that is unit number 3 will be covering the following theory learning outcomes the first theory learning outcomes is about understanding the extra support services that you need to give to your elderly clients the second theory learning outcomes is learning the preparation and serving of daily nutritious diet the third theory learning outcomes is attending the daily visitors of elderly client and fourth one is about measuring and understanding the daily vitals along with that as you know caregivers this unit will also cover some practical learning outcomes which includes demonstration of ways to make daily diet exhibiting the ways to clean the surrounding environment and demonstration of various daily monitoring units now moving on let's talk about the first theory learning outcome that is understanding the extra support services now as we have already covered that there are some basic services that you need to give to your elderly client on day to day basis but those activities those services are not limited you have to extend those services to extra support services and there are seven extra support services that we do have the first one is about companionship what you need to understand is the elderly client require the quality time and you have to spend quality time with your elderly client the second extra support service that you need to give is in terms of memory care as we have understood that the memory and cognitive functions decline over a period of time so you need to engage themselves into activities such as remembrance therapy and puzzles the third extra support service is about home management which includes at a lighter note you have to do housekeeping including laundry cleaning and organizing living spaces the fourth extra service that you need to give is about facilitating the social activities which includes arranging and participating in social activities functions the fifth extra support services is about cultural engagement celebrating festivals engaging in religious practices or participating in community events the sixth one is about technology assistance as we know that technology has done a major change in our life so you need to make sure that your elderly clients are in connect with their family and friends through calls video chats or social media and the last one the last extra support service that you need to give is about emergency preparedness you have to develop and communicate emergency plan with the elderly clients and their family members moving to our second theory learning outcome that is about understanding the preparation and serving of daily nutritious diet since we need to understand that diet is the base of the health and wellness of your elderly client so you need to make sure that you give proper importance to this particular activity we will see what are the steps and what are the considerations that you need to 
take. The first one is about consultation with a healthcare professional. You have to ask for personalized recommendation based on the elderly health condition, dietary requirements and any specific needs if they do have. Second thing is about considering their dietary preferences and restrictions. The individual's dietary preferences, cultural background and allergies or food intolerance should be properly taken care of. The third one is about hydration, adequate intake of fluids as dehydration is a common concern among the elderly. You have to make sure that water in some forms like herbal teas and soups can be contribute to overall hydration. The fourth one is about meal frequency, smaller, more frequent meals throughout the day instead of three large meals, especially for those with reduced appetite or difficulty in eating large meals should be considered. Fifth one is about texture modification. If needed, modify the texture of the food based on individual's ability to chew and swallow because we all understand that with most of the elderly people, their teeth will not be in full functioning mode. Now, caregivers, in doing all these things, you have to make sure that there is a balance of nutrients. And what are the basic nutrients that you need to consider are as follows. The first one is the protein intake, which is important for muscle health. And it includes meats, poultry, fish, eggs, dairy, legumes and plant based proteins. The second one is fruits and vegetables. Aim for a colorful variety to ensure a broad range of nutrients. You have to make sure that fruits and vegetables, it could be boiled one, simply cut one, can contribute to their nutritional functionality. The third one is about whole grains. Because whole grains not only provide energy, fiber, it, they also provide the essential nutrients. And you can choose a wide variety of whole grains such as brown rice, kuna and whole wheat products. You have to also take care of the dairy and dairy alternatives, particularly for calcium and vitamin D which are important for bone health. And the options are milk yogurt and fortified plant based alternatives. After looking at nutrients, you have to also look at that with the age, you have to limit the sodium and sugar in their diet. So make sure that you use herbs and spices to aid flavor instead of excessive salt. And you can opt for natural sweeteners or limit added sugars. Instead of it, and doing all these things, you can also add the supplements. If recommended, include any necessary vitamin or mineral supplements to address specific nutritional deficiency. Apart from it, you have to also make a pleasant dining environment. Make sure that during meal times, you have to create a pleasant and social dining environment. And this will positively impact the individual's appetite and overall well-being. Apart from it, you have to also monitor and adjust as per the individual's weight, nutritional status and overall well-being. You have to also take care of the special diets required, particularly in Indian context. Most of the elderly will go for fasting rituals. So, you have to take, make sure that you take care of those special diets. If they do have any medical conditions, for example, diabetes, heart disease, then also you have to follow the prescribed dietary guidelines. Now, caregivers, after looking at the diet part, a very important part in Indian context is about attending the visitors of elderly client. Every day or in a frequency, you will see that people are visiting their elderly and you have to make sure that they are attended with due considerations and which are as follows. First one is about 
doing a warm welcome. You have to greet visitors warmly and with respect. In Indian culture, hospitality is highly valued. You have to maintain professionalism because it will help in creating a comfortable and respectful environment for both the visitors and the elderly client. The third one is about offering refreshments, offer tea, coffee or a light snack to the visitors. This gesture is considered polite. Apart from it, you have to also understand the cultural norms. Different regions in India may have specific customs and etiquettes. So being culturally sensitive is important. Apart from it, you have to communicate effectively, providing information about the elderly client's well-being, any specific needs or preferences they may have and update on their health should be communicated. In doing so, you have to also respect the privacy because while providing information, you have to avoid sharing overly personal details without the client's consent. So you should be very clear in, with your client that what are the information that you need to provide to others. Apart from it, there might be some chances in which you have to coordinate visits. As per the preference of your client, you have to facilitate meaningful activities. If people are coming, then make sure that it includes simple games, watching the favorite TV show or engaging in light conversation. You have to be attentive to your client's need. During conversations and during those visits, you have to remain attentive to the needs of the elderly client. If they require an assistance or express discomfort, you have to prioritize their well-being. And last but not the least, you have to express the gratitude. After the visit, express gratitude to the visitors for their time and company. And this helps in building a positive relationship. Now we are moving to the last part of this unit and which is about the recording of vitals. Here vitals means the necessary body functions that we need to take care of and we have not to take care apart. We have to also look at their daily functioning. right? So, what are those vitals that we need to record are as follows and important thing that you have to note down here is that recording vitals should be as per the guidance of the healthcare professional. So let's start with the first vital that you may need to record. It is the blood pressure. Elevation in blood pressure can be sign of various health issues including heart problems. So you need to make sure that you maintain a record of the blood pressure. Second is pulse rate or heart rate. Changes in heart rate can be indicative of cardiovascular or other health issues. Similarly, respiratory rate is also there which could indicate the problems in respiratory system or metabolic issues. You have to also record temperatures on regular basis and in particularly corona time we had seen that oxygen saturation particularly people who are having respiratory issues you have to also record their oxygen saturation level. Apart from it blood sugar or glucose level are a common concern in Indian subcontinent. So you have to also record their glucose levels time to time. Apart from it, there are some indications, there are some vitals which are external in nature when, when you can record them easily. For example, weight, height. Apart from it, you have to also look at their urinary output because changes may indicate hydration status, kidney function or other health issues. Similarly, you have to also find it out their schedule of bowel movements. Changes in frequency, consistency may have insights on their digestive systems. You have to also track their mobility and activity level, which includes their ability to move, walk and engage in daily activities. Apart from it, you have to also record about the pain levels because sometimes if they have a consistent disease, 
there could be a consistent discomfort. So, you have to record their discomfort or pain that they may be experiencing. Now, focusing on their cognitive functions, you have to record any change that you face in terms of their memory, attention and orientation. Changes in cognitive functions also indicate of neurological issues. There are other vitals that you can record which includes their skin condition, their adherence to medication, whether they are taking the medications properly or not. In terms of it, you have to also record their sleep patterns, their hydration status, their dietary intake and last but not the least with cognitive functions, you have to also record their mood and emotional well-being because changes in mood or behavior may be indicative of mental health concern. So, caregivers, in this particular unit, we had seen four important extra support services that you have to give to your clients. The first one was about preparation and serving of daily nutritious diet. The second that we have seen was about attending the daily visitors of elderly client and third one was about measuring and understanding the daily vitals. So, with this all and covering your practical learning outcomes, you will understand that how to take care of your elderly client on day to day basis including the extra support services. That is all for this unit.